Welcome. I'm Maddie and I do product evangelism at Raza. I'm really humbled to close out the Raza Summit. You know, the last time that I spoke at the Raza Summit was actually in September of 2019. So it feels unreal that that was almost a year and a half ago. And, you know, a lot has happened since then, right? Um, I actually wasn't at Raza back then. Then a few months after the summit, I started working at Raza. But really, a lot has happened since then. Our community continues to grow exponentially and contributes to our capacity to innovate and stay ahead of the market. In just the past year, we've had millions of downloads worldwide, right? And more enterprise companies that are embracing digital transformation across different verticals and industries continue to use Raza to build mission-critical AI assistance. And the addressable conversational AI market has also grown, and more and more enterprises are building AI assistance to work on these mission-critical tasks. And as you heard Van Baker from, from Gartner earlier this week, the majority of enterprises, about 67%, will be using conversational AI and chatbots will soon be your most important development activity. And so we wanna build interfaces that speak our customer's language so that we can meet our customers where they are and allow them to simply have a conversation to get things done on their own terms. And that's the entire premise of conversational AI, right? Is that people can just express in their own terms what they want and it's the assistant's job to translate, understand and help. And so natural language interfaces have the ability to be truly transformational. So today we'll revisit some of what we talked about at the beginning of the summit, which is scale. One of the biggest challenges with getting value from conversational AI is being able to successfully apply this at scale. And you know, when you're in the process of doing that, you often start at the POC stage, right? And then slowly go to production before you grow your user base before you, know, you grow your teams that work on these applications and have the ability to share data between applications and so forth, all of these things, right? And as you go through this process, you'll inevitably face challenges. And today I wanna to talk about some of the most common challenges that we've encountered and we've seen people encounter. We've talked with our customers, with market research analysts, experienced some of this ourselves. And some of the most common challenges we see are you know, for conversational AI applications to be in production in an enterprise setting, they're required to meet enterprise security standards. And these standards can be particularly challenging as they, you know, generally deal with all of the layers of the open systems interconnection model or, you know, the entire software and a hardware stack. And getting your assistant to execute actions on your user's behalf, by the way, is one of the most rewarding things to do when you're designing and building uh, conversational software. But it can actually be quite cumbersome and overwhelming to integrate with several third-party services. Um, and based on your assistance domain, it can start to get really complicated, but it doesn't have to be. We also talk a lot about how standard software application best practices don't go away, right, if you're building conversational software. In fact, most of these best practices and principles lend themselves really well to conversational AI development. And enterprises might have varying DevOps expertise. Um, you might not know how, uh, when, or if you need DevOps expertise, but it's always helpful to include DevOps early in the process. Right, and your application will scale in complexity and scope, and it will scale with users as well. And so as your user base grows, the number of conversations that people have with your assistant will grow too. And that introduces a whole set of other challenges. And you know, while you're trying to scale, it's really important to ensure a great customer experience throughout. So we'll talk about some of that today. Now let's talk about how we can either plan ahead or be aware of these problems up front or you know, um, try, try to solve them. With security mandates, you need to think about a few things. You need to think about secure storage, data privacy, access controls, among other things. And enterprise security standards, of course, you know, depend on the type of infrastructure or platform that you use to deploy your assistant. And when it comes to secure storage, 
Some platforms like Kubernetes come with out-of-the-box support for injecting credentials and environment variables in a secure manner, while other platforms like Bare Metal and VM might need custom solutions. Some enterprises might even mandate using a service like Vault to manage sensitive configurations and credentials. So it's really good to plan ahead and be aware of these um, upfront. And with regards to data privacy, right, security mandates will tell you how to secure data in motion. And this is typically done using transport layer security or TLS um, and HTTPS when services need to communicate with each other and with the outside world. So if TLS is a mandatory requirement, certificate management will be something that you'll need to plan and, and configure. And if you're using um, Kubernetes, you might want to use a package like Cert Manager to make certificate management more seamless. Another common strategy used in Kubernetes environments is to expose RASA services via ingress. Uh, this has out of the box support for TLS termination and service load balancing. So we talked about data in motion, but enterprises may also require that the conversation data be secured at rest. And since data persistence in Raza is typically delegated to databases, use the built-in encryption capabilities of these databases to secure the, the conversation data, the transcript data at rest. And you know, when it comes to authentication and authorization, single sign-on or SSO is a de facto standard in most enterprises, and you're probably already, you know, uh, super familiar with that. Now, SSO is implemented using LDAP or SAML, and you know, Raza Enterprise supports SAML-based SSO. So you might want to make sure to enable this to prevent unauthorized access. And you know, if you're already using Raza Enterprise, it's important to know that Raza adheres to the principles of least privilege when it comes to um, access controls, you know, in the form of RBAC. And you can manage your roles and permissions to ensure that users are given appropriate access privileges. So you can control how your team works, and which team works on what, and so forth. You can start to add way more value to your assistant when you can get it to do mission-critical tasks in a reliable way. And for you to be able to do that, you need to integrate your assistant with third-party services. And this process can get complicated um, and especially requires some planning if you plan to scale and integrate your assistant with more and more third-party services. So you definitely want to start by planning out your integration points based on your assistant's domain. Start narrow. It's always a good practice to start small with maybe one or two absolutely needed integrations. And in order to figure out what kinds of integrations you need, really study user behavior and user engagement signals, right? Like what are users looking at or clicking on and learn about their needs that way. But, you know, you know, obviously follow privacy ethics to learn what you can and cannot do. Your users' privacy and following ethical considerations when building AI systems is really um, extremely important. So as long as you're meeting those um, ethics standards and privacy standards, look at what users are saying to your assistant in addition to looking at what they do and how they behave. So. For example, if 40% of your users ask your assistant um, to make maybe a credit card payment on their behalf, then you might want to add the skiller action. So try to come up with a data-driven approach when you're building your integration plan. And build these skills as question answers first, and then based on traction, implement an integration as an actual user goal, which is you know, something that the user wants to do. If you optimize your integration strategy based on what users need and ask for, you end up building something that will actually help them and something that they will actually use. And when you come up with these integrations, right, um, establishing connections to these services can depend on a few things like enterprise mandates, deployment topology, uh, firewall and network rules and so forth. So as always, be sure to not hard code or store configuration and connection details as part of your source code securely store these values in some type of external configuration files that are set up during deployment. So, you know, you might want to use services like Vault to store and retrieve these details. It's also a good um, plan to follow the uh, single responsibility principle when you create custom actions and custom actions are how you kind of 
um, make integration points you know, happen. That means the single responsibility principle means that it's best to not perform too many things under a single custom action. For example, if you want your assistant, let's say you're building a help desk assistant and you want that help desk assistant to open, follow up on and close incident management tickets, then a single custom action shouldn't execute all of these tasks, right? Ideally, you'll wanna create a separate custom action for each of these tasks. So, you know, DevOps is a pretty important part of software development in general. And for those of us that aren't too familiar, DevOps is a set of practices, um, culture, and tools that help you deliver software applications at scale. So DevOps tools help automate this process. For example, Raza X is a tool set that you can that can help you test, deploy, and improve AI assistance in production environments. But sometimes there's a wide variation in the level of DevOps expertise in companies, and this can cause lots of problems. Among um, you know, one of those being it will ultimately delay getting assistance to production. And so all of the best practices when it comes to typical software development still apply here. Right. So having a conversational team with DevOps representation that sets up a CI/CD pipeline that runs automated tests that versions both code and content can really ensure continuous and scalable delivery to production. So one of the biggest challenges with building resilient AI applications is that it's impossible to anticipate all of the things that users can say to it. And this is especially true when the assistant's scope or user base expand. And as more users start interacting with your assistant or your team starts to support additional capabilities and additional conversation paths, the chances that your assistant mishandles user requests will obviously like understandably become higher. So you still need to ensure that your assistant adapts to user requests and behavior as opposed to forcing the user to adapt to pre-programmed conversation paths. And so the best way to scale this is not to come up with synthetic or developer generated data, but to follow conversation driven development where you're listening to user insights and using those insights to make your system more resilient to these conditions. And as you're starting to do CDD, um, which you, know, you should do as soon as possible, as soon as your assistant is in the prototype phase, as you're starting to do this, right, it's understandable when your assistant doesn't always know the answer. In fact, it won't a lot of the times. But when this happens in a production setting, stakeholders that are unfamiliar with conversational AI might get concerned. So there's a few ways that you can try to, try to solve this problem. First, ensure that your assistant provides a fallback response. Um, if the user provides an ambiguous response, then maybe try to disambiguate it by prompting the user to say it a different way. Second, try to ensure that the assistant returns a specific fallback response because generic fallback responses can be quite off-putting. So for example, if the assistant can answer questions about credit card payments, instead of returning a generic response, try maybe a specific one, you know, something like asking to transfer the user to someone on the credit card team or someone that can actually answer their question. So, all of these things that we talked about are some of the most common challenges that we see at the enterprise level. And some of the solutions that, that we tried to discuss today attempt to solve them, or at least raise awareness so that we can build conversation software that works reliably to ultimately provide the best customer experience, where the customer simply has to talk to your assistant to get things done. You know, they don't have to try to act within the confines of the assistant's way of understanding things, Rather, it's the assistant that has to adopt and evolve to the customer's behavior. So in that way, natural language interfaces truly have the potential to change the way that we do work, to change the way that our customers interact with us and our businesses. So we started the summit off with, you know, a couple of days ago with talking about the many faces of scale. And then our, at our panel yesterday, we looked at how other product leaders and teams are solving some of these challenges at scale. And then later in the day yesterday, we, you know, we dove into Raza's unique approach of making assistance um, really great and you know, how you have to use your own data to accomplish that. And then earlier today, we saw how T-Mobile 
one of the largest enterprises out there, is using a set of processes that we just talked about now to scale reliably, all the while providing a great customer experience. And so, you know, with that, um, I want to end this talk and thank you for being here. Um, we hope you enjoyed the summit and now let's open it up to some questions. Mm -hmm.